Ladies and gentlemen, I am back. I'm sorry that I've uh, kind of disappeared for the past couple of weeks. I had a personal issue that I had to be taken care of. But here I am. I'm back. Um, it's week 12 just completed. Uh, going to be week 13 this Saturday. Uh, let's go over some things that that happened. I'm not going to go over week 10 or week 11. Whichever ones I missed, they're, they're in the past. You know what happened. You, you've seen them. It's okay. I'll forget about them. Week 12, however, I didn't do like the first an, the, the analysis of it, but this is just going to be a recap. Uh, everybody basically knows who the top seven were because there was no change. Uh, as of this past week, the top four that were in were Georgia, Alabama, Oregon, Ohio State. They're the four playoff teams. Uh, Cincinnati, the first team out, and Michigan, the second team out. Now, the new college football playoff rankings have not been released yet. Obviously, they'll be released on, on Tuesday at 7 p.m. Make sure you watch it. It's going to be on ESPN. Um, but obviously, we all know Georgia's going to stay number one because their next game is against... Uh, Somebody called Georgia Tech. And if Georgia Tech plays the same way they did against Notre Dame, it's going to be a long day for the, the Jackets. Uh, the Bulldogs are just going to run all over them. They're going to shove the football down their throat, and they're going to just score at will. Um, Alabama, I think, should drop to three just because of how they played against Arkansas. Yeah, they came away with a win. Yeah, Arkansas was ranked, but they looked terrible. I actually watched that game, and I was not impressed. I was more impressed with Arkansas, because if you know SEC history, you know Arkansas has been one of those teams that's at the bottom of the barrel. They're just one of those teams that people circle. They're like, hey, there's an easy win. Arkansas is not that way no more. And they showed Alabama that, hey, we can compete with you. Um, Oregon, they're going to drop. They looked awful yesterday. I didn't even watch that game, but I watched a little bit here and there. But they lost big, 31-point deficit to Utah. 38-7 to was that final score. They're done. That's gonna that that's just gonna put them in the. They're just done. Their season is over. They're not gonna be playing for a, a playoff spot. They're probably they're gonna be playing for the Pac-12 championship, more than likely, and they're gonna get a pretty decent bowl. Uh, that that drops them to nine and two. Ohio State, boy, in their game, one team showed up, the other team did not until halftime. Actually, uh, Michigan State. Forgot that there was a football game going on in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, Ohio State at halftime was up 49 to zero. That's zeros. That's and that's not a fluke. That's the number one or the number four team in the nation just pounding, pounding on the number seven team. Uh, the final score there was actually 56 to seven. So Ohio State won the first half easily. Second half they tied it. I mean, both teams scored seven points in the second half. It's it's remarkable. So Ohio State, I honestly think they should beat number two. As much as I dislike the Buckeyes, you can't argue that they are really good. Uh, they weren't good at the first part of the season. That's why they lost to Oregon. The second part of the season, though, they are closing it out strong. And Michigan State was a poor um, victim of that. Uh, Cincinnati, I feel like should be number four. Yeah, they've won a lot of close games against nobodies. But they have been winning. They have a big win against Notre Dame. And my honest opinion, Michigan, even though they just clobbered, um, clobbered Maryland, since Michigan State lost so bad, that shouldn't move them up to four, in my honest opinion. I'm not one of the, the college football playoff um, chair members, committee members, whatever you want to call them, whatever they are. 
I'm not one of those guys. It's just a fan of college football giving his honest opinion. So I think the top four for week 13 should be Georgia, Ohio State, Alabama, Cincinnati, with Michigan at number five, and maybe Notre Dame or Oklahoma State at six. Um, Oklahoma State put on a – I guess they put on a pretty good show last night because they shut out Texas Tech, and they're going to the Big 12 Championship. Okay, a little more about championships because that is in two weeks. Two weeks. We've got one more regular season game, and then we get the conference championships. The SEC, Georgia, Alabama. If Alabama plays like they did against Arkansas, it's going to be a long game. Uh, Nick Saban's probably going to lose a lot of hair because he's just going to rip it out. Georgia's just going to, again, my honest opinion, Georgia's just going to have their way. Uh, Alabama's defense was not that great. Their offense was okay, but their offense was not, they weren't that good. Um, But I think it's going to be Georgia beating the Crimson Tide in the SEC Championship. Uh, Pac-12 championship. I don't. I don't think they have. Hold on. I don't think they've established who's going to be playing in it. More than likely, it's going to be Utah for sure, especially after beating um, Oregon last night. Uh, yeah, they they don't have that. They don't have it yet. But as of right now, it looks like it's going to be Utah and Oregon having a rematch. Uh, Oregon's just got to get through Oregon State. And if Oregon State wins and Washington State loses, who knows? It could be one of those three. Them at 6-3 and three in the conference. That's going to put Oregon State at 6-3 and three at, in the conference. And if whoever Washington State's playing, they're playing Washington. If they win that game, they'll put them at 6-3. and three. So they're going to have to go with a tiebreaker somewhere. Which, honestly... Oregon beat Washington State, right? Yeah. Um, So Oregon's got to step up above them. However, if Oregon State beats Oregon, that'll give them the tiebreaker because they do have the win against the Ducks. So it'd be Oregon State and Utah in the Pac-12 championship, which would be incredible, especially given the fact that Oregon has just played crazily well these past few years. They may have had some ups and downs, but they they find their, their wills again. Uh, next conference would be ACC. That one looks like it's going to be Wake Forest and Pittsburgh. Wake Forest and Pittsburgh are going to be playing in the ACC championship. Yeah, 48 to 27 was... Wake Forest loss uh, yesterday. So Clemson's still not out of this whole ACC championship debacle here. They still have a shot. If Boston College beats Wake, Wake Forest and Clemson, who, who's their last game? And Clemson beats South Carolina? Well, I think it's going to be um, it's going to be Wake Forest. Just because one loss, well, no, that, that'll, that'll put them tied. Okay, so let me get my facts straight here because I'm I'm all debacled. I'm I'm so if Wake Forest wins this weekend against Boston College, it's gonna be a definite yes for the Demon Deacons to be in the ACC championship. If they lose, that'll tie Wake Forest and Clemson with Clemson having the tiebreaker because they do have the win over Wake Forest. But you've also got NC State, who's still in there? Um, I'm pretty sure Wake Forest beat NC State as well. So that gives them the tiebreaker there. Uh, No, they didn't even play each other. Okay. Oh, yes, they did. They played last week. So Wake Forest has the win over NC State for that tiebreaker. So if Wake Forest goes down this weekend, Clemson will be tied with them. NC State will be tied with them if... The Wolfpack can win their game this weekend. But tiebreakers will go in Clemson's favor because they have the win over Wake Forest. Wake Forest has the win over NC State. 
So we're going to see some craziness in the ACC where they started off terrible. Like it was an easy, easy road to ACC championship game for Wake Forest starting out. Um, the American Conference, Cincinnati is pretty, is probably going to be, yeah, they've got one game left and it is against ECU. And I think they're going to have a heyday with the Pirates. I don't know if the American Conference has a conference championship game, honestly. If they don't, I feel like Cincinnati will win it. But I'm not really sure. I I know nothing about the group of five. So I'm just going to go with the Power Five. Big 12 championship is going to be Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. Unless Oklahoma State beats Oklahoma. Because I believe that'll give Baylor their shot at the Big 12. Because of the win over Oklahoma. So, Big 12 still kind of in the air. Two teams are 7-1 in the conference and they still got to play each other. So, we'll see how how that goes uh, this weekend. Big 10 championship, I believe right now it could be either Ohio State and Michigan or Ohio State or Michigan. They've got to play each other this weekend. That's going to be one heck of a game. And Wisconsin is, so whoever wins Ohio State and Michigan will be playing Wisconsin Wisconsin for the Big 10 championship. Um, I'm hoping it's Michigan because, again, I don't like the Buckeyes, but the way Ohio State showed up against Michigan State, I don't see it happening for the Wolverines. Not this year. Maybe next year. Maybe next year. Um, Pac-12, we already went over. SEC, already went over. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So, those are the, the Power Five Conference Championships. I don't know about all the other cha- the other conferences, like the um, AAC Um, The Conference USA, the MAC, the Mountain West, Sun Belt, they don't really matter to me. The only one that really matters outside the Power Five is Cincinnati. The AAC, I need to figure out if they have, well, I can probably figure that out right here, actually. Um, If they actually do have a conference championship. Uh, They do, actually. So it's probably going to be Cincinnati and Houston playing in the AAC championship game. Um, Sunbelt Conference, it's already locked in. It's Appalachian State and Louisiana uh, Raging Cajuns. Um, Pac-12 championship will be on Friday, December 3rd. Uh, Conference USA championship, eh, Mountain West, uh, is probably going to be probably Fresno State and Boise. I I don't know how they they work. Um, Big 12 championship is still to be determined. The MAC still to be determined. Um, SEC championship, it's pretty much locked in. It's pretty much a lock. Um, Georgia is going to be playing Alabama. Nobody else has enough wins over Alabama to actually knock them out. So it's going to be Georgia and Alabama. Even though, uh, well, I mean, I guess... Auburn may still have a chance to ruin their day. But even then, Ole Miss lost to Alabama, so that's not going to help them out if Auburn wins. The only thing it will help knock Alabama out of is the playoff race. Um, So it's still going to be Georgia and Alabama in the the SEC championship. Um, Who else is left? The AAC is probably going to be Houston and Cincinnati. ACC, uh, like I already went over that, it's still in the air. And Big Ten, it's going to be Ohio State or Michigan against Wisconsin. Simple as that. Um, My prediction is going to be Wisconsin. So, with all that being said, let's go through this top 25 right quick. Because there were a couple upsets, but most everybody pretty much won. Um, Georgia had their way 
with somebody called Charleston Southern. They won 56 to 7. Uh, Alabama won a close shootout with Arkansas, 42 to 35. Utah tore Oregon apart, 38 to 7. Uh, Ohio State just pff, slaughtered Michigan State, 56 to 7. Which, on that, if you notice, Georgia has the same final score as the Ohio State game. Um, Ohio State, however, played a ranked team. Uh, Georgia played Charleston Southern. Some people may say that should put Ohio State first. I don't think so. I don't. I don't think so. Just because of the the one loss that Ohio State has was against Oregon. Georgia still undefeated. I. It, that's why I say Ohio State should be second at the highest. Um. Anyway, moving on. That's just my two cents there. Uh, Cincinnati. They won over SMU, 48-14. to That was a good win. They needed that. Another big win for them. Uh, Michigan took Maryland to school. They won 59-18. to Michigan State, I already said, they got slaughtered 7-56. to uh, Notre Dame shut Georgia Tech out. It was 55-0. Uh, to nothing. Georgia Tech better bring a better team than that next or this coming up weekend. Because they are playing the dogs. Uh, I don't even remember where that game's going to be. Is it in Athens or is it in Atlanta? Well, I don't know. Oh, it's going to be in Atlanta. Okay. Or wherever Georgia Tech plays. Uh, yeah, it's in Atlanta. Okay. So, Georgia's about to embarrass the Yellow Jackets at home. They're going to be in Georgia Tech Stadium, and they're just going to have their way. Uh, Oklahoma State played at Texas Tech and shut them out in front of their home fans, 23 to nothing. That was at Texas Tech. Just think about that. Uh, Wake Forest forgot that they had to play Clemson at Clemson in, the Death, in Death Valley. I think they are now on a 34-win streak at home, I think. It's either 33 or 34 for Clemson. That's incredible. Um, Baylor pulled out a, a win against Kansas State, 20 to 10. Ole Miss escaped one. I, I don't want to say they escaped, but they did. They only won by 14. Yeah, they only won by 14. They played Vanderbilt and won by 14. So I think Ole Miss... We'll probably move up one spot. That's going to be 11th. And that's just because Wake Forest lost. Um, Oklahoma escaped a win against Iowa State, 28-21. Uh, to 21. That was a heck of a game. A lot of calls that, that, were, the, that were questionable, but that was a heck of a game. Oklahoma pulled it out. Uh, Caleb Williams, I think, had a 74-yard run for a touchdown, which is mind-boggling to me. But they escaped with a win there. Uh, BYU played Georgia Southern and won 34 to 17. Close one. That was a 17 point uh, win. Nebraska almost pulled the upset against Wisconsin. They closed the, or Wisconsin came back and closed it out at the end to pull out the 35 to 28 victory. I didn't watch any of that game, but from the highlights, that was a pretty decent game. And Nebraska's got a lot of close losses. It's not like every week they get blown out. They go out there and the, their opponents just have their way with them and run over them. They play hard. They they get close to winning, but they just can't close the games out. It's like a bunch of other teams in the past that I've ever watched who can win, but then they lose. They can win, but then they lose. It's just back and forth. They can play well, almost get the win, but lose. That happens every year with certain teams, and Nebraska has become one of those teams. It, they were close, but no cigar. Close only counts on horseshoes and hand grenades. Uh, Texas A&M had their own cupcake to play. That was Prairie View A&M, 52-3 uh, to was that final score. Iowa pulled out a 10-point win over Illinois, 33-23. to Pittsburgh pulled out a 10-point victory over Virginia. That was 48-38. to uh, San Diego State. Wow, one only by eight at UNLV. That was twenty-eight to twenty. 
that's wow. Okay, uh, NC State beat Syracuse. They that was a uh, forty-one to seventeen. I already talked about Arkansas playing really well against Alabama, but losing by seven. And that was that actually came down to the last play of the game, honestly. Uh, UTSA remains undefeated with a close victory over UAB. They pulled out the last second touchdown, folks. They won that game 34-31. to I didn't watch that game, but I seen the final score and I seen the highlights. Boy, whew, UAB almost knocked off an undefeated team and a top 25 team. But UTSA still remains undefeated. Uh, Utah, they showed up. They had some sick uniforms, and they played well to be wearing those. Of course, Oregon had some pretty decent uniforms, too. But uniforms don't win any games. Unless you're Utah, because apparently those uniforms helped them out for some reason. They had the USS Salt Lake City uh, from Pearl Harbor on their helmets. It was pretty cool. I, I'm not a U Utah fan at all, but that was pretty cool to me. Uh, Houston, we have a problem in Memphis. We have a problem in Memphis, and it was Houston. Uh, Thirty-one to thirteen was that final score. Houston just had a a field day. And Mississippi State played te uh, Tennessee State, fifty-five to ten. No surprise. The SEC had a lot of um, nobody opponents, and by a lot, I'm trying to say. Okay, Georgia played Charleston Southern. Texas A&M played Prairie View. Mississippi State played Tennessee State. Kentucky played New Mexico State. LSU played Louisiana Monroe. Tennessee played South Alabama. That's six SEC teams not playing each other or a big name. Uh, Alabama played Arkansas. Ole Miss played Vanderbilt. Uh, Auburn played South Carolina. And Missouri played Florida. That's eight teams. So half of them played each other. Half of them played somebody else. Just some random team. Speaking of the SEC, let's let's go through this real fast. Boy, the SEC had some upsets that I never thought I would actually see. When I say that, I mean one. Because Georgia played Charleston Southern 56-7. Was that, that win? Uh, Alabama beat Arkansas 42 to 35. Already talked about that. Ole Miss pulled out a close one against Vanderbilt 31 to 17. Arkansas lost to Alabama 35-42. Uh, A&M played Prairie View A&M and they won 52 to three. Mississippi State, where I talked about them, played TSU uh, 55 to 10. Auburn played in South Carolina. I didn't think this was going to happen, but South Carolina actually pulled out the win. 21 to 17 was that final score. Uh, Kentucky beat New Mexico State with ease, 56 to 16. LSU beat Louisiana Monroe kind of easily, but not really. They won by 13, uh, 27 to 14. Tennessee, whew, boy, they looked phenomenal yesterday. Uh, defense gave up a couple touchdowns, but that's okay because we scored 60 of them. Not 60 touchdowns, but 60 points. Uh, we had a safety. We had a safety with a second string def defense. We I don't know how it happened, but South Alabama ended up somehow on the one or two. I think it was a, a punt, I think. And we tackled him in the end zone for a safety. Who knew with the second string defense? I'm impressed. Um, South Carolina, Vanderbilt, we already talked about them. This is the game that blows my mind. I, you know, I'm a huge Tennessee fan. Obviously, I, I rep them every video. Missouri played Florida. They were at home. So, it's not like they were in a swamp. But the Florida Gators have given up on Dan Mullins. I don't like when teams just give up and don't want to play anymore. But just watching the Gators, they are... Whew, I think their last win, I think they've actually lost four or five in a row now. They are awful. Hold on. I'll tell you. Florida has lost. Oh, well, okay. They lost one 
they won last week. But that's because they played some team called Samford. Um, but that was their their best win. They were four and five, four and five going into the last week. They they were five and five coming into this week. They are now five and six. They've got one more chance to go bowling. I don't think it's going to happen. Who's Florida have left? Florida State. Maybe. Yeah, they got Florida State. That's going to be a heck of a game. Uh, Florida State started off the season really questionable. Uh, they looked terrible. They lost to some no-name team there. Uh, both Florida State and Florida are 5-6, and six, looking for a bowl, bowl game. That's going to be their game. It's going to go either way. I think Florida State wants to rebound from the beginning of the season, and they want to get to the, the bowl season. Florida just wants, I don't know, I, I guess they just want the season to end, so who knows? Florida State may pull the upset here. They they may go into the swamp and just, hey, we're here to play. We're here to play for a bowl. And if you guys don't want to play, hey, we'll just take it from you. I might just have to check in on that game every now and then. That's going to be Saturday at 12. Oh, perfect. I can actually watch that game. Nice. Um, Yeah. But Tennessee, I'm going to talk about them a little bit. I just got to brag on my volunteers. Yes, they are six and five. That's okay. Uh, one of those losses shouldn't have been, but Pittsburgh's a pretty good team. Uh, we lost to Florida, Georgia, Alabama, and Ole Miss, and Pittsburgh. That's five losses. Uh, we could have beaten Pittsburgh. We just started off too slow and tried to rally too late. Uh, we should have beaten Ole Miss. <laughs> Yeah, we should have, I mean, Descartes, it just wasn't our turn to win that game, but we we could have beaten Ole Miss. I think we should have played Florida now, honestly. I think Florida would have gotten slapped, slapped around by Tennessee now because they're just playing with no spirit. They're just not even playing. They just. I think they want a new coach. The Florida fans want a new coach. Um, We weren't going to beat Georgia. We could have beaten Alabama. We just don't have the depth to compete with Alabama late in the fourth quarter. We did compete for three and a half, so we did compete. But with five losses, four of those coming to teams that, or actually all five of them, out of five losses, three of them could have gone either way. We caught Florida at a good time for them. They won 38 to 14. So I don't know if we were supposed to win that game or if we could have, but we could have. Um, But, we're six and five now. We got one more game left. That's Vanderbilt. Ah, watching them play the smaller teams. Watching them play Kentucky, even. Um, Tennessee is a powerhouse, and I think by I mean they're not like a powerhouse powerhouse like Georgia or Alabama, but they're a powerhouse compared to what like past Tennessee teams since 2009 when we when uh, Lane Kiffin left in the middle of the night for USC to Jeremy Pruitt, that's what, 2009 to 2020? That is 11 years? Yeah, 11 years. We just have been downhill. We have some up games. We have some down games. We have down season. Last year, we won only three games. And even then, we went into the Vanderbilt game with two wins and walked out of there with three. So... Vanderbilt, I think, is going to be outmatched, and they're in play, they're in Knoxville, so the fans are probably going to show up and show out and just be loud because we're going bowling, boys. We're going bowling. I, I know we missed the bowl season last week, or not last week, last year, but our last bowl game was, I think it was a Gator Bowl. I think I don't remember what the bowl game was, but it was against Indiana. We won that. So we've won our last bowl game two seasons ago. Um, I'm really proud of where this team is at. Nobody expected Tennessee to be 6-5 and five going into the last game of the season. I mean, honestly, I didn't either. I always do like my own little prediction of the whole series or the whole season. And I always, I don't know why I do, because it gets my hopes up and then they just get crushed. But I always think they're going to go like crazy crazy 
win season, like they're going to have two losses. Like I think I had them, I predicted they were going to go 10 and two. Oh, okay. So I did it a little more realistic this year. I had them going eight and five or eight and four. I had them beating Pittsburgh, losing to uh, Florida, Missouri, Alabama, and Georgia. So two of those losses I got right. One of those losses was wrong. That was Missouri because we just trampled over Missouri. Uh, I guess Florida game right, sort of. I had them losing by three. We won by 24. It's fine. Um, obviously, Pittsburgh beat us and Ole Miss beat us. So that was, there was three games that I guess wrong. Pittsburgh, uh, Missouri, and Ole Miss. We won one of those. Yeah, won one of those. And lost the other two. So I had them going eight and four this this year. I'm surprised at that, honestly, because I don't even know. I don't even know what to say about that. Some some people say that they were supposed to go like six and six, five and seven, not bowl eligible. I don't know. They weren't expecting Tennessee to volunteers to be this good with a new coach this early. It's year one with Josh Heupel. And honestly, he's done better than the past coaches since Phil Fulmer in his first year. Um, Butch Jones, Derek Dooley, uh, Butch, I already said Butch Jones, Jeremy Pruitt never went seven and five in their first season. Never. Maybe went to a bowl game. I don't really remember. But Josh Heupel has this team on a one-way track to greatness again, and I'm enjoying it. Um, there's a shirt that I seen at the at one of the malls that I was at um, a few weeks ago. It says, Believe the Hype. Hype spelled not H I P E. It's actually spelled H E U P. So it's like believe in Hypel. And I believe in him. He's got this team going the right directions. Did I mention he's doing this with a depleted roster? He doesn't even have the full 72 man roster. And he's 7 and 5. I'm sorry, I'm looking ahead. He's 6 and 5. I'm looking way ahead. Whew, boy. So for him to come in here. A bunch of players transfer. I think there was 26 of them that transferred. For him to come in here, work with what he's got, and still win games, especially games that we weren't supposed to win. Kentucky, I don't think we were supposed to win that game. I'm glad we did, but I don't think we were. Um, Missouri, we could, that could have went either way. Uh, South Carolina could have went either way. So all season long, Tennessee's games could have went either way. We were probably supposed to beat Bowling Green, uh, Tennessee Tech, uh, South Alabama, Vanderbilt. That was four wins right there. Four wins. And Josh Heupel came in here and said, you know what? I ain't going four and whatever. I'm going to get us a winning season. I'm going to get us to a bowl game. Let's do this. I'm going to bring in this whole speed offense. We, we run play after play after play. They try and get three plays in one minute. That, I, whew, it works. It works. Um, maybe not against Georgia. It worked for the first little bit of the first quarter when we went up 10 to 7. But then Georgia figured it out and just played from there. Uh, it almost worked against Alabama. We just need more, more depth. The way the Tennessee Volunteers are playing under Josh Heupel, I feel like it's going to help recruiting big time. Um, especially with uh, our quarterback, Hendon Hooker. He's top six, I believe, top six in the nation in quarterback rating, which is incredible because when he was at Virginia Tech, apparently he didn't do anything. So I was kind of skeptical about him. He definitely showed up and put all of us naysayers to rest. 
Um, I like him. I'm glad we have him. He's got a, a wicked arm. He's he's accurate. The first couple of games, kind of kind of questionable. But once we hit that first one, he's just like, oh, okay, now I've got it. I've got it now. That was when he became starter. Josh Heupel looked at him and said, hey, you're number one now, so keep doing what you're doing, and we're going to go places. Um, he's got <clears throat> a decision to make. He is a senior with one more year of eligibility. There's rumors that he's going to go to the NFL, but he could also stay for one more year. I honestly think he should stay for one more year, make sure he's definitely ready for the NFL, because when he gets there, I don't want him to just get there and just fail. Um, would I blame him if he went to the NFL instead? No, I wouldn't. Um, when you're playing in college and you're trying to pay bills or pay off student loans or whatever, money is, is nice to have. Um, NFL, you get that money. Paycheck. Paycheck. That's that's what you play for in the NFL. Um, I don't care much for the NFL just because I think college football is way more um, exciting. But if he goes to the NFL, <clears throat> recruits are going to look at Tennessee and be like, hey, Josh Heupel gets players to the NFL. If he stays, they're going to look at Tennessee and be like, hey, Josh Heupel apparently has something to something with this team that makes them want to stay. I think I want to go there. So either way, recruits are looking at Tennessee in a positive light here. Either they're going to the NFL for sure, or the team is really, 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 really into this new quote coach. And hey, recruits will just come to us. Hopefully we don't have to pay for them, like in McDonald's bags or whatever, because I, pff, that blew my mind when I heard about that. Really? Don't pay recruits. Come on. You see all these other teams that do that and they get in trouble. They lose bowl, uh, bowl chances. They lose national championship chances. It, it just doesn't work. So, so we've got one regular season week left, and then it's conference championship games, and then it's bowl season. I'm ready to see what's going to happen. I'm ready to see what bowl game Tennessee's put in. I'm ready to see our opponent. I'm just ready for next season for sure because we're going to be great. Well, not great. We're going to be probably better than this year because we're going to have more players, hopefully. But that's all for now. I'm going to get this video uh, submitted. If you want to subscribe, it's going to be right up here. Um, drop a comment down below. Give me some some pointers. And like like the video if you like it. I love you guys, and I support you. Go Vols. Woo!